One of the government's key priorities is growing New Zealand's economy. A fundamental component of this is the government's National Infrastructure Plan, of which the $10 billion Roads of National Significance Programme is a core aspect. Completing the seven essential state highway projects making up the Roads of National Significance is focused on improving safety, reducing congestion and supporting economic growth. The Tauranga Western Link is one of these seven Roads of National Significance. The Western Bay of Plenty's population is expected to double over the next 30 years. The Western Bay of Plenty also forms a key corner of the Economic Golden Triangle in conjunction with the Waikato and Auckland. The Economic Golden Triangle is responsible for 45% of New Zealand's GDP. Tauranga also includes New Zealand's largest port, the Port of Tauranga. All these things need to function to ensure that we can grow New Zealand's economy. The Smart Growth Strategy was developed by Tauranga City Council, Western Bay of Plenty District Council, the Bay of Plenty Regional Council and New Zealand Transport Agency in an integrated manner to manage this future growth. A number of transport corridors have been identified as key to keep people and freight moving and to achieve managed growth within the Western Bay of Plenty. The Tauranga Eastern Link was identified by the region as the top priority transportation project to keep these people and freight moving. The government has recognised the contribution Tauranga Eastern Link will make to the economy and the region's priority, hence making Tauranga Eastern Link a road of national significance. At a more local level, the Tauranga Eastern Link will bypass 17 kilometres of State Highway 2 that currently goes through to Pukki. This section of State Highway 2 is the second worst section of State Highway for serious and fatal crashes per kilometre throughout New Zealand. It's at capacity which limits to Pukki's ability to grow and expand over time. The Tauranga Eastern Link will also provide a 12 minute travel time saving each way. It will provide better connectivity to New Zealand's largest port and will leave a more pleasant town centre for the residents of Tupuki. The community was consulted in 2009 on whether to bring forward the construction of this key road by up to 10 years through tolling. An overwhelming 92% of respondents agreed with the approach proposed, bringing forward the project by 10 years and allowing the project to progress rapidly to where it is today. So what is the Tauranga Eastern Link? It's a 23 km, 4 lane, median divided highway. It starts at the Tamanga roundabout with an upgrade to the roundabout moves on through to the Mangatawa interchange, next a major interchange at the main road, an overpass at Parton Road, a major bridge crossing the Kaituna River, through and over Makatui Road and finishing with a new roundabout at the Paiangaraya junction of State Highway 2 and 33. So, the 455 million Tauranga Eastern Link is the biggest riding project in the Bay of Plenty and will deliver many benefits earlier due to tolling, including improving productivity and enhancing economic growth, allowing safer and easier travel, providing more and efficient connections for business and industry, improving access to New Zealand's largest port, the Port of Tauranga, helping to manage growth in one of New Zealand's fastest growing regions, and during construction, generating jobs and growth to the local economy through wages and salaries. Hi, I'm Mark Kent. It's a privilege to be the Chief Executive of the Port of Tauranga. Port of Tauranga handling in excess of 15 million tonnes is New Zealand's largest port. Uh, what I am really proud of though is we are Australasia's most efficient port. We already have very good state highway connections to the port, significantly improved by the recent Harbour Link project. Uh, we're delighted with this new Eastern Link, so significant travel time savings for the port that will further increase the productivity for our exporters. As a result of the bypass, it will give Te Puki community the opportunity to create a unique town centre to attract people back into the town. It will be much safer to go from one side of the shops to the other. It will be people friendly and the community board and focus have got some fantastic ideas to create a town centre for Te Puki. We'll have new businesses, I'm sure. We'll have customers happy we'll be able to have conversations in the street, we'll be able to park and get out of our parking more safely. It'll be fantastic. We'll get our town back. It'll be good for us. To us, it's the Eastern Link. It's going to make it so much quicker to get to the port, make it easier and far more safer. It's 
especially when the traffic in Tupuki is congested and we're going to be able to go right round it so much quicker, get home quicker, everybody's happy. With us bypassing Tipuki, it's going to make it so much better for Tipuki people. We won't be in their, in their road all the time and in their face. I know they don't like the heavy traffic going through the middle of their city and we don't have to worry about the cars coming up on the inside and it just makes it so much safer for them backing out onto that main street and so much safer for us and that's what we're after. I'm uh, born and bred in Tauranga where I studied at Tauranga Boys College. I've been with Fulton Hogan in Tauranga for three years now. In the last two years I've been in Dunedin studying a diploma in civil engineering. Uh, on the completion of that I applied for a job here at Tauranga at Tauranga Eastern Link uh, where I was successful and have been here for two months now working as a site engineer. Uh, Tauranga Eastern Link has given me opportunity to work here for possibly five years where my uh, family and friends are from and just really looking forward to a good five years. The area is uh, unique in that uh, it has been continuously occupied by uh, Tangata Fendu for many centuries and uh, as manifested in um, the rich heritage of the area, uh, hilltop paths, uh, archaeology and um, naturally uh, it's Tangata Fendu have a, um, a very strong interest in what happens within their, their cultural landscape. Members of the group include uh, Ngāti Whakaue, Ki Maketu, Tapuika, Waitaha, uh, as well as Ngāti Pūgenga, um, as well as Ngā Pōtiki, Ngāti He, uh, Te Arawa Lakes Trust and uh, Te Runanga uh, o Ngaitarangi We Trust. Okay. In September 2009, uh, the Tangata Whenua Advisory Group uh, signed off some protocols with New Zealand Transport Agency uh, to ensure the care and disposal of human remains in Taonga which uh, may come to light uh, during the earthquakes phase of the, of the construction. These protocols provide a sense of comfort for Tangata Whenua uh, who in the past have suffered as a result of um, infrastructural development in the area uh, without uh, consultation by uh, central government or even local government. So um, it's, uh, the irony is that we're now part of the, the decision making in terms of uh, infrastructure development and we welcome that. The Towering Eastern Link will be delivered in two stages. The first package of seven contracts is focused on clearing the way for the main contract to start. This work involves relocating two bulk water mains for Towering City Council, extending Kaituna Road and Truman Lane, and upgrading the Kaituna drainage system pump station. We're also constructing some higher stop banks at Mangatawa and increasing the Maranui stormwater pond. Lastly, relocating and upgrading the Paiangaroa way station. The second stage is the main physical works contract itself. This stage of the project will be delivered by what's known as a design and construct contract. This incorporates the construction of all roading and toll infrastructure as well as the detailed and final design. This model has been selected because we consider that substantial opportunities exist for innovation, particularly through the management of earthworks and the material selection. In 2010, the main contract to build the Towering Eastern Link was awarded to the Fulton Hogan Heb Construction Alliance, and the Minister of Transport turned the first sod to mark the official start of construction. For this design and construct contract, Fulton Hogan and Heb have formed a construction alliance, along with our design partners. URS, Opus, Peters and Chung and Bartley Consultants. So as a team we've got a series of values that we use to guide us on our journey along this project. The first one of those is respect of our colleagues and the community. The second is integrity, behaving honestly and ethically. The third is trust, trust in each other. The fourth is pride in everything that we do. The fifth is caring, looking out for one another. The sixth is responsibility for everyone's success and the seventh is the courage to challenge traditional thinking. With construction underway, the Fulton Hogan Heb Construction Alliance is not only focused on delivering a top quality piece of road, but also committed to delivering the highest quality safety, environmental and social outcomes. So how do we build a 23 kilometre long highway? Well, a lot of it comes down to planning and innovations. And some of the innovations that we've used on this job include the use of polystyrene as a lightweight fill to reduce the weight of the domain road uh, abutments in the interchange that you'll see us build later on in the project. 
Building a 23 kilometre highway has its fair share of challenges. One of them is how we manage people across such a long distance. In order to do that, we've split the job into three zones. The first zone runs from Tamanga through to Domain Road, the second from Domain through to the Kaituna River, and the third from the Kaituna River through to Paiangara. Key elements of the construction program include the preliminary works, which involves getting the project office and uh, information centre up and running, as well as doing things like relocating fences, clearing trees and buildings, and starting to cut access into the site. We'll also be building haul roads and setting up trial embankments, and these trial embankments are going to be used so that we can see just how quickly the, uh, the peat soils that sit underneath this road are actually consolidating. Ground improvements are about strengthening the soil underneath the structures, particularly to protect from liquefaction in an earthquake, and typically to do this we put stone columns in the ground or displacement columns. But in some locations what we're really trying to do is speed up the time that we can squeeze the, the moisture out of the ground, and to do this we're using uh, things called wick drains. A large part of this project is also about earthworks and with three, 3 million cubic metres of earth to shift over the 23 kilometres, a lot of time is going to be spent on the program shifting dirt from one location to another, placing and removing preloads. Other elements of the project include the structures and we've got seven of those plus also some, uh, some big large culverts to allow the streams to cross underneath the, uh, the alignment and also the pavements and with 23 kilometres of pavements there's a lot of work that goes into those starting with laying down the, uh, the gravels to form the base and later on moving on to the asphalt which uh, finally you'll drive on. We'll be mitigating the effects of the highway on the landscape by planting over 300,000 plants and trees. So to wrap up we're investing 455 million in the towering western link to improve safety, reduce congestion and support economic growth. We're delivering this through a 23 kilometre four lane highway with a central median barrier. It starts at Tamanga with an upgrade to the roundabout down that end, a major interchange at Mangatawa, another major interchange at Domain Road, a overpass Parton Road, a significant bridge over the Kaituna River, an overpass at Makatu Road and a new upgraded roundabout at Paiangara Junction. The next five years we've got a big team making a big investment to deliver this essential piece of infrastructure for our community.